Um, well, in 2008, I uh, was lucky enough to write a paper that um, looked at the uh, inner sanctum of wine competitions and wine judges. And the result of that paper showed that uh, a lot of the results of wine competitions were questionable. Um, and uh, I continued that research from 2009 through 2012. Uh, and I thought it would be time to uh, kind of look back at what we did in 2008 and bring you up to date and look at the results since. Uh, this is a great picture of a uh, confident wine judge. She's wearing white, judging red wines. Um, maybe she's a neophyte. I don't know. <laughs> maybe she doesn't spit. Yeah. So now, what I, I thought to uh, add some interest to this uh, presentation, I would uh, get some audience participation. So let's say... Um, what I have on here is a slide of uh, some actual data from 2007. Um, on the left-hand side, I have a scale that's showing from no award to bronze to silver to gold. Now, even though the, the gold uh, section looks like it's expanded, it really isn't because nobody ever gets 100 points in a, in a wine competition, so gold really is 96 points. So here are, uh, this is a, the first wine is the Chardonnay in 2007, judged by uh, four judges. Uh, I've tried to indicate the scores of the judges on the graph. And let's say, is Brad here somewhere? Brad Richard? There you are. Okay, so you get to get a score on this. Now before you do, I'll tell you there's kind of two ways of going about this. As, and you can imagine that you're, you are the chief judge. Uh, these are the four scores given by four judges, and you can kind of take the average score if you want, but you can also give a poo, as we call it, the preponderance of opinion. And that has been used at the state fair when one wine gets, let's say, three silvers and a bronze. If the three silvers gets the preponderance of opinion, or if you get three, three golds and a no award, it would get another gold and be awarded a gold. So you have your choice, in this case, of giving a score to this wine. Uh, you, you, and you, you might want to look at this and say that, wow, this, uh, the wine got a, a no award, it got a bronze and a bronze plus, and it got a gold. And that could be because the gold, uh, maybe these judges like uh, malolactic fermentation, or maybe most of the judges like a malolactic fermentation, and, the, and one judge hates it, um, uh, and vice versa. So, Brad. What score would you give this wine? <laughs> it's good to pick me. Um, I think I'd go well, I had to help him earlier today, so it's <laughs> turn around is fair play. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, bronze. Bronze, okay. Well, let's go to another. We've got three to go through here. Let's go to another one. Um, let's see, who am I going to pick on? Morton, are you here? Yeah, there you are. Okay, here's a, here's a wine that got uh, two no awards, uh, a bronze, and a silver plus. How would you score this wine? A bronze. A bronze, another bronze. So, so far we've got a uh, bronze for the first wine and a bronze for the second wine. Okay, you're happy with that. Okay, Don. <laughs> this is the worst one. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy, this got a, a 94, which is a, a gold minus, a, a 96, which is a solid gold. It got a, a bronze and a bronze plus. Okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a 90, a silver. You'll give it a silver. <laughs> Oh, that's fair. Okay, now here's the trick. These are all the same wine. Uh, yeah, they're all the same wines. Judges tasting the same wine, poured from the same bottle, and served on the same flight. 
So here are the scores themselves. Uh, and when we set up this, uh, this experimental plan, we had to realize that since some of the wines were uh, tasted three times and most of the wines were not, we had to distinguish between the ones that were tasted three times and others. And it's unfair, really, to give the wine the highest score. So before the wines, before the judges taste these wines, we designated them as a mother and two ghosts. The ghosts were simply there to collect data. So in this case, uh, it was the, uh, the mother got a bronze medal, and that's you know, even though the, the highest score was a silver. So anyway, this wine ended up with a bronze medal. So now I have a slide that shows the, uh, uh, the typical experimental setup where we had uh, each judge and a panel uh, evaluated three, four triplicate samples during the competition. And so you can see here um, at the, at the, what I've done on the right-hand side is calculate the range of scores that the judge gave the wines. For example, the first judge uh, had scores of 84 and 80 and 80 for the triplicate samples. And so the range of scores was four. But the second judge, look at that. The second judge scored these, and this is real data, by the way. Uh, the second judge scored uh, from 80 points to 94 points. This is a range of 14 points for the same wine, from no award to a gold, actually a gold minus. Uh, the third, third judge uh, on the first wine was pretty good and pretty consistent. In fact, if you look at the third judge over on the right-hand panel, you'll see that the third judge had maximum uh, uh, ranges of scores of two points, zero points, four points, and four points. That's, that's really good in terms of, uh, in general. Uh, but if we look in general at the very bottom of the second panel, you'll see the maximum range of scores given by the, the four different judges. And so the first judge has a maximum range of uh, 10 points, the second one 14 points, the third one 4 points, and the fourth one I can't see quite over there. 10. How many? 10. 10. I want to also use this slide to point out an interesting feature. That notice that the, the wine number three, look at the scores on wine number three. They're relatively consistent. The first, judge, the first judge scored them all with 80 points, that there's no award. Second judge did the same. The third judge gave it a bronze and no award, and the fourth judge scored it as no award. So this is a general feature we found out with these uh, scores, that if the wine, if the, if the judges were consistent, it normally was for wines they did not like. The problem was when the, uh, we had wines that they did like, then, then they were quite inconsistent. Okay, so in this case, um, I'm looking at down again at the bottom panel on the right-hand side. We're looking at the maximum range of scores that this judge gave the, uh, these wines. Now, this was for 2007. In 2008, we have the same judges but the maximum range could be different. And we kept track of this for the uh, uh, eight, uh, eight or nine years or so of the, the competition. So the next slide looks a little confusing at first, but it tries to pick up on this point. Here, on just look at the left-hand panel. We're looking at the maximum error or the maximum range uh, for each judge along the, 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 uh, abs the uh, abscissa, is a, each, each judge, uh, the number of the judges from one to about 72. And then what we've shown on the ordinate is the maximum range. Now this is the maximum range minus the maximum, minus the minimum of the maximum range. So for example, uh, this judge right here had a maximum range of 10 points over the course of the, the several years he'd competed and had a maximum range of four points. That was the minimum amount of the maximum range that he had. Let me point out, no judges had a maximum range of zero points. That would be an extraordinary event. Uh, no one judge had a maximum range of two points one year, up to six points on another year. We consider that judge an extraordinary judge. 
When I first showed uh, some of these data to Neil Hulkauer, he said he would fire them all. <laughs> but this is what we have. If we fired the judges that, had, uh, that did not do very well, we would have no judges whatsoever. <laughs> uh, here, looking at the, the right-hand side of the graph, we have judges that one year had a maximum range of four points, which is good. Another year had a maximum range of 12 points. 12 points is between a bronze, which is 80, 84 points, plus 12 is 96. It's a bronze and a, and a gold. And we have some that went from um, zero or two points to 14 points. So, you know, one year they did quite well, but it's unusual because uh, on another year they had a maximum range up to 14 points, which basically can go from no award at all to a gold medal. The panel on the right-hand side uh, does the same sort of thing, but with, with standard deviations. And uh, I kept track of both. The, the judging, ba uh, evaluating judges on the base of maximum range is a little bit uh, stingy uh, because it's the worst, it's the worst possible uh, that, uh, case that they could do. Whereas looking at the standard deviation is sort of like an average error. Uh, but if you take, it, take the standard deviations on a scale from uh, zero up to uh, that's seven or eight or nine points, think about this, the confidence interval. The confidence interval is roughly plus or minus two times the standard deviation. So if you have a standard deviation of four points, that's plus or minus uh, a score plus or minus eight. That's a, a range of 16 points. You're going from uh, no award to gold. So either way you look at it, you get about the same results. So that's the, the major thing that uh, I'm presenting today is this one, this one graph that shows um, the average uh, the, uh, typical kind of scoring patterns for judges. And these, uh, what this represents is the scoring patterns for judges who have judged at least four competitions over the, over the period from 2004 through 2012. <laughs> Uh, this is, I don't want to go into this because there's not enough time, but uh, uh, Jin Kao and I wrote a paper that looked what was reasonable for, uh, to expect for a judge in terms of their maximum range. And it turns out that we thought this, what we call a tolerance level of four, was uh, a reasonable level, but you'll have to read the paper for that. Uh, I'd just like to continue on with the, the basic conclusions over the period from 2004 uh, four through 2012. Uh, first of all, perfect judges do not exist. Uh, judges are biased. Uh, they're biased in a way that uh, virtually all, all judges increase their scores after they discuss uh, the results among themselves. I didn't mention this before, but the way the state fair worked, the judges have come up with an initial score for the wine uh, and then they just, without any discussion, and then, then they discuss their results, and then they can change their score if they wish to. So um, they all did. Virtually the, the, the pressure is there on the judges to increase their scores. That, uh, that'd be a nice guy, I guess. Um, I did just one year, I did a comparison between male and female judges, and I really didn't find any significant difference in, the, in, the, in their consistency. <laughs> okay. Um, there was a feeling once we were able to get this paper published in 2008 that it would be a, be, have a devastating effect on the results of the entry, entries into the state fair competition. And so here I've shown you the uh, the number of entries into the state fair for over the past uh, almost 10 years or so. And you can see, yes, after 2008, there was a significant drop in the number of entries in the state fair, but it was a short-term sort of thing. Uh, after that, the, uh, the, there's sort of a natural variation of a few hundred entries per year, but uh, the results were not so bad. So it's bounced around a little bit. Um, um, so, yes, there was a problem. Um, there's no doubt that uh, that paper had an influence on the number of entries in the state for the following year. Now, finally, 
I want to say that I've collected this data for from 2004 through 2012 and I have uh, I've shared some of this data with some of you uh, I have a sanitized version of this data set which I would like to share with anybody who's interested in it I've sanitized it because I've taken out the names of the wine or the wines themselves so you won't know who won what in any given year but look at the kind of data that you have uh, there's the number of gallons produced, there's residual sugar, there's a price. Uh, so there's this, and, and it also will go on and show you all the awards, uh, both by the judges, both the first evaluation and the second evaluation. Uh, so it's a significant data set, and uh, if anybody's interested in uh, looking at this data for their own research, uh, just get in touch with me. That's it. Thank you very much.